talk to you a little bit today. By the way, I'm so excited about us. The computer didn't turn on this when I got here. Last week I was in another place in Florida and I got up there to speak and I said, God is giving us this message and the second I opened the, my, my mouth, all the place go dark. And I said, God, what are you trying to tell me today? The place, no power, no PowerPoint. And I said, you know, I had to shout. There was two, three hundred people. I don't know how many. I had to shout the message. And you know what? I think this is maybe God uh, trying to get our attention, not to rely too much on technology. Me and uh, uh, your, uh, your uh, pastor, we were <laughs> debating whether or not technology will work. But hallelujah, it's work. But don't worry about technology. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to be in our midst. So let, let, let's pray. Avinu Shebashamayim, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are good and merciful and gracious. Abba, I ask that those who are here, those who hear through the internet, those who do not know you, those who know you and might be in despair today, those who need the God of Israel, Abba, to have a visitation today from you, Adonai. You are good and merciful, and your mercy endures forever. The scripture says, Hodu le'adonai kitov ki le'olam chasdo. We ask this in the precious name of Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Uh, by the way, I've been enjoying Florida so much in the weather, weather except to today. It's <laughs> been a wonderful. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the title of the message today is actually coming from uh, 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 the Torah portion, Chukei Gerut, and we're going to look at something that is, uh, is been steering me this morning uh, as I prepare. Uh, often, how many of you here consider yourself a messianic believer? A follower of Mashiach, a messianic believer, yeah? Uh, in messianic believer, I notice a trend. You see, I travel a lot, and... A lot of time we as Messianic believers, especially how many of you did not grow in Judaism, but you ran here as fast as you can? Yeah. You know they have this thing in Texas, I wasn't born in Texas, I ran here as fast as I can. Uh, often often we, we, we have, I, I see this thing in the, our movement that I would like to address today, uh, where, where I see a, a pattern that people are really falling in love with uh, 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 the richness of the Jewish culture, the, the richness of the, our tradition, and so forth. And, and we came up with a term for this in, in, our, our, in, our, in the last five years. I never heard this term before five years ago. We call this, this term Hebrew roots. Hebrew roots is a term. Everybody here heard the term Hebrew roots at least one time, right? And I can't start scratching my, 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 my head. What does it mean by Hebrew roots? Okay? And I want us all to step out of our comfort zone today. Okay? By the way, it's very Jewish not to agree on everything. Okay? <laughs> can we say it's okay? But can we say nobody here is going to get offended? Oh, man? Okay? So don't send me nasty emails after this. Yeah? And one of the terms that is kind of defining uh, the messianic world from the Hebraic world is this appropriateness of the nations to partake part of, uh, of the covenants of Israel. And it's funny that we're debating it. If you ever go to a messianic conference, you'll hear the same old thing coming up again. And then you and your pastor were sitting in a recent in a, pa in a convention. The same thing come again. What are we going to do about the Gentiles in Torah? Should they be allowed or not allowed to partake of the covenants of the Israel, the Torah? And I'm telling you, every conference I go to, we are all coming back to the same question. And the question is, why are we coming back to the same question when the Torah is already settled it for us? Why do we want to go back in time to address it? Let's address something new. But for the sake of addressing something old so that we can have something new, I will address something old so we can hear something new. Now I really confuse you. Now, <laughs> you following me? The Torah portion, this Shabbat, have a lot to say about how this is, how this is uh, supposed to work. Jews and Gentiles. Gentiles is not a bad word. 
By the way, if you call somebody a goy, it's not a bad word. A goy means nation. The Jewish people also call goy. Goy kadosh. A set apart nation. Okay? Let's look at what the Torah says this week. I want to jump straight to this. And it says this. Veki agur it chager, and then when the stranger shall sojourn with you, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all, let all these males be circumcised, and, 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 then, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, but, but no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is uh, homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourn among you. Seems pretty, pretty straightforward to me, no? Not so much, amen. <laughs> yes? Not so much, amen. I want us to look at this particular thing. There are four, four items I would like to highlight to you because people say, well, look, the Gentiles have the same equality as Jews. It's very clear. One Torah, one law I've given to you. I would like to highlight for you four laws that you might see or do not see in this particular passage in the Torah. Number one, I call it Chukei Gerut. The first word, the first law that we see here is a Chok. Chok is mean a law of Gerut, okay? The Hebrew word that is used in the text here, by the way, this is the Jewish Publication Society. They have really done a bad job in translating it. It says, and when the stranger shall sojourn with you. It doesn't say stranger. Okay? The Hebrew word there is the word ger. Okay? And the Hebrew word ger is rooted in the word gar. Gar is somebody who live inside of you. Live within you. Okay? That's what the real word is talking about. Okay? Which means one who live within you. Somebody who is a stranger has a different word in the Hebrew language. It's called Nochri. Nochri is somebody who doesn't care about Israel, okay? Doesn't care about the Jewish people and doesn't care about what the God of Israel in the end of the day says. So the first thing we have to establish in the scripture, because I want to kind of cut, cut to the point here, there are two separate kinds of Gentiles. There are Gentiles and there are reptiles. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. There are those who decide to join them. You see in this Torah portion, you see the entire gospel. The entire gospel, entire Roman 11 is becoming very, very clear if you understand the Torah. Okay? It's saying, the key agur itcha ger. If a ger, if those who really have a desire to be with you, then do those. Okay, the first thing that the Torah is established for us, that there are sects among the nations who decide to join themselves in Israel. Okay? The second thing that the Torah is established here, I call it Chukei anti Ityahadut. I want to talk to you for a moment. <coughs> um, our, our movement is plagued with labels. People ask me this question all the time. Okay, I am not born Jewish, but now I came to the Messiah. What should I call myself? And I say, who cares what you call yourself? <laughs> it is what Hashem called you that's matter. What does it care than what you call yourself? Well, a person said to me recently, Oh, I can't refuse to use the, the term Christian. Fuya. Bad term, Christian. It's a Greek's mind. I says, hello. Is it the same guy? If you're calling him this, or you're calling him that, is it the same Messiah? Of course. Yeah, maybe your understanding is a little different. Maybe now you have a bigger revelation of the Hebraic mindset of who was Yeshua, but it doesn't make it bad. Notice something. Those who decide to join, join, join themselves, to Israel, okay, they are called Gerim. Are they calling Yehudim now? Are they calling themselves Jews? No, they are not Jews. They are still Jews 
And there are still those from the nations who join themselves to the Jews. But they are not the same. Okay, everybody following me? One thing, we have to be very clear on the Messianic movement. We don't need to label ourselves. Yeah, there are Jews and there are other people. But this is really not what the point of the text is about. The point of the text is that they join themselves into Israel. Yes? Everybody following this? By the way, Israel doesn't need to join themselves to, to you. You need to join yourself to Israel. Let's get the facts straight here. Yeah? Don't invite me to your Shabbat meal in your house. Or when I invite you to Shabbat meal in my house and you open your McDonald's bag. Yeah, don't do that. You invite it. Come in. That's what it says. Come on on. But matter of fact, there's only one place in the scripture, only one place in the scripture that talks about somebody becoming Judaizing. Anybody know where that is? Show of hand. It's in Megillat Esther. It says that the fear of the Lord fell on them and they went and ran and Judaized themselves. Why? Because they saw the God of Israel in, in full power. It's, a, it's again, it's a picture of being grafted in. But the point of the matter here is that you do not have to become Jewish in order to partake of the covenants of Israel. Following me? Yes? Actually, the scriptures are the opposite. Don't become Jewish. Number three. This is important. Chukei Ezrachut, I call it. Citizenship laws. Look at what the text is saying here again. It says here very clear, clearly, and then let them who come near and keep it, and there shall be one who is born in the land. Okay, in Hebrew it uses the, the, the term ke'ezrach ha'aretz. Beloved, if God is calling you to the messianic movement, I say come on in. You can become one of us. But we don't need to become one of you. You become one of us. Ezrachut. Okay? And the fourth law, Chukei Chazara Betshuva. This is an important one. Okay? Look clearly what the, te the text here says. The, te the text says, Torah Achat Yela Ezrach. There will be one law to you who become a newborn citizen and, uh, and also to, to me as a Jew. There will be one Torah. Now let me ask you a question. I am a new citizen of the United States. Yes? Fairly new. Am I obligated to live by the law? Yes. yes. However, I can never become the president of the United States. Not that I would want his job. <laughs> okay? Obama can keep the job. I can do better than Obamacare maybe, but no. <laughs> But the point of the matter is, sure there is one Torah, but the relationship to the one Torah is different between a Jewish born and somebody who joined in. If you are joining, you cannot become a Levi or a Kohen. You know, there is a part of the Torah that do not apply to me. By the way, there's part of the Torah to apply to women. They will never apply to me because I'm not a woman. Thanks, God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, be beloved, what I'm trying to tell you, the Chukei Chazara Betshuva clearly state that there is one Torah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I believe in one Torah for all, all people. There is one law. God is not a man that we should lie, Numbers 23 tell us. He's not going to give us two Torahs. Okay? The scripture clearly states, a cross-reference number 1515 to 1516, clearly states that it's permissible for you to come on into the covenants that is given to the Jewish people. Okay? Now, Rabbi Shaul continues on and he makes this point, extrapolating on the Torah. He says, therefore remember that you once were Gentiles in the flesh, were called the uncircumcision by the called circumcision, made by the flesh by the hands, and they were without Mashiach, being aliens of the common man of Israel. You want to know what you call yourself? Here you go. 
How about calling yourself citizenship in the country club of Israel? And you don't even have to pay the tax we pay. <laughs> How lucky you are. And strange it from what? From the covenants of providence. And by the way, notice the language of Shaul. Does he say covenant of, of promise? He uses the term covenants of promise. Wait a second, aren't we a new covenant believer? Sure we are, but every covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the new covenant, they all tie to one each other. And each one of those covenants tie to one another. Each one of those covenants hold promises. What Shaul is saying here, that now in Yeshua, you can come in and partake of the covenants of God. This is the heart of God. To see everybody being restored back to Him. Okay, this is very, very clear. We don't need to spend more time on this. People are making it, we say in Hebrew, nidosh. It's, it's a gum that lost its taste. Okay? It's a waste of time. You don't need to become Jewish. Because the Jewish Messiah's shoulders are big enough for you to enter into the government of Israel. You don't need to take a DNA test because it's not going to do anything for you that Messiah is not already done. Okay? The question that we as a movement have to ask ourselves today is not whether or not I am allowed to partake in the covenant. The answer is clearly... Yes, yes, yes. But yes, when you come to the city on the top of what the scripture says, I lift up my eyes to what? Psalm 121. What? Hills. Paul Wilbur need to rewrite his song. <laughs> I lift up to the mountains. Yeshua Matthew 5.13 says, A city on the top of what? Mountain will not be, not hill. There is only one city on the top of a mountain. Eh? We, anybody know which city this is? Jerusalem. He's talking about Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a Jewish city. So you have the responsibility as those who be joining after yourself in to learn the way of our people. Okay? But don't let anybody condemn you. Some of you will run. Some of you will walk. Some of you will crawl. As long as you're moving in the right direction, that's what counts. God has given us a principle of this in Leviticus, Parashat Kedushim. He says, as you become holy, va'it kadashtem, va'item kedushim. As you become holy, you are already holy unto me. You know what it means? Like, I like to exercise, right? Anybody here like exercising? In my mind. In my mind. I have, the, I have the music, you know, like the 80s, the Eye of the Tiger music. <laughs> I have the wristbands. <laughs> I have the cal ca calculator, calorie calculator. You name it, I have the apps. I have the apps even for this to tell me how much I'm losing by the minute. <laughs> but you know, something always happens, I never get to get on this. I never get to do it. Phone ring. The refrigerator calling my name, <laughs> you know, etc., etc. But God says really something. I, I want you to say here what God messages in Leviticus. He said, as you put your armband and listen to the eye of the tiger, you already render race in my eyes. That is the way Hashem looking upon us. And that is important. Do you understand? You are not a second class citizen. Okay? But you are like orphans. What I mean by orphan? You lost the inheritance of your father Abraham. You lost it. You, you replace it with the church. So now you find out you have a father, Abraham. So you run to your father. Run to him. And he will receive you. And your Jewish brothers will be there to help you. Because that's what we call to be as Jews. All our lamb. Or la goyim. Okay? 
So listen to Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> but really, I'm now getting to the heart of this point. What does this mean to you and I? What is this scripture in the Torah? Torah Achat. One law shall be to you. And what does it mean in practicality? There was a wonderful Hasidic Jew who lived in the, 18, in the 19th century by the name of Paul Philip Levertov. He's one of my favorite heroes. He was a Hasid Jew who came to faith in, in the Jewish Messiah, okay? And he makes a serious Havdalah. You know what Havdalah is? Separation. He makes a serious separation, okay, between what I would like to call Hebrew root, okay, Hebraic move, root, and all such things, and what he called the Torah of love. I want to talk to you today about this separation between those two, okay? I feel that somewhere we stuck, most of the Messianic congregation are stuck in what I call Hebraic root mode or divining ourselves. I always chuckle when I walk into a Messianic synagogue. I say, we are Torah observant synagogue. First of all, you are not. If an Orthodox Jew would walk in here and see you turning on lights on a Shabbat, he will say, that one thing you are not is Torah observant. So let's drop the Torah observant altogether. Torah observant means that you adhere by the laws of the sages, by the Talmud. None of us are Torah observant. Even those who claim that they are Torah observant, they are not Torah observant. We all pick and choose. Pick and choose. We are not Torah observant. I know what it's like to be Torah observant. I was raised in this. So let's drop the Torah observant. We are not. But we might can call ourselves Torah of love. We are keeping the Torah of love. And the Torah, friends, it's not about a set of do and don'ts, okay? But it is really about lifestyle. It's about ethic, what we call law of Musar, Musar. And it's not just I will do this and will not do this. Just because, by the way, I want to be brutally honest, just because we meet here on a Friday night to welcome the Shabbat, or we'll be here Shabbat morning tomorrow. Or just because we observe Passover or hear the Torah being read. It does not mean that we truly welcome the messianic or build the messianic kingdom as it should be right now here on earth. Just because we do all those Jewish things does not mean that we're preparing the way to the king as it should be. Okay? I would like to draw a differentiation with you for a moment between a Hebrew roots movement and a true messianic faith and its core. Please turn with me real quick to a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 30. I don't have it. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't put it. Look at me in Deuteronomy Devarim chapter 30 verse 6. It says this, Umal Adonai Eloecha and the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart. Again, before we read it, I want us to think about this today. This is a question that the God surfaced in my heart. What does it mean for us to be partaker of a covenant, specifically the Torah, of Israel, that given to Israel? It says, And the Lord thy God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed. To love the, God, the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul that you might live. You know what it means, Hashkafat Olam? Anybody know? Hashkafat Olam is the, one, 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 the way one sees the world. Okay? In order to understand the Torah, friends, you cannot just start in Exodus and read Deuteronomy. You have to understand the Torah is cyclical. And you have to walk backward 
and see what the purpose of something that was given it to you to understand all the laws and the one law that is given. Why was it given? You have to work backward to understand it. You understand? Don't just look forward, but look backwards to understand it. Okay? Why was the Torah given us to begin with? What, why, why God want you to join to the Torah anyway? To, to the covenants of Israel anyway? So that we will be arrogant and antagonistic? I told it today to Pastor David. There is no more antagonistic group out there than the messianic group movement. You want to beat a bunch of lawless people who call them the Torah observer? Come to the messianic movement. You want to see people with a chip on their shoulder? Come to the messianic movement. Yeah, I am in it so I can speak about it and I've been in it for 20 years. Did God brought the nation in so they can be arrogant and boastful toward their Jewish brothers? God forbid. God forbid. The Lord wants to bring every person back to him. And the Torah is the mechanism to bring people back to Mashiach. Okay, that is the vehicle that is given. The word there that is used in the Hebrew, Umal Adonai Elohecha. God says, I give you all those laws on all those regulations for one purpose. So that you will receive a new heart. That is it. It is not that you will be more righteous. It is not that you will be more holy. So that you recognize how much your heart needs me. That's it. You understand? That is it. Yeah, I must say with all sincerity, I consider us as a messianic movement to be right now in a place of infancy. We must come back to this principle of Deuteronomy 30 verse 6, being circumcised. But not just being circumcised toward Hashem, but taking the word of Yeshua Mashiach, literally when he says, leave your gift at the altar and go to your brother. Yes. This is the circumcision of the heart. When is the heart is hardened? Not toward God always, but also toward one another. Yes. Yeah, I consider those who do not agree with me you know, I put a, a message on Facebook the other day, and I said to all my Christian friends, happy holidays for Christmas. I could not believe how the body of Messiah act. Or somebody find out that I am not Trinitarian the way they define the Trinity. Oh my goodness. Can I get a refund back on the book? I'm going to order the support. I don't need your support anyway, I said. Beloved, we must take Deuteronomy 36 as the goal of Torah. You want to know what the goal of Torah is? The heart. It is absolutely the heart. Yes, those who do not agree with us, like the two house movement. I'm going to say something that I am sure is going to sound to somebody is going to offend. But yes, they are our brothers. If somebody knows Messiah, he is my brother. I don't care. If somebody loves the God of Israel, he is my brother and sister. Even with their serious errors. And also, you know, I stand against those. I am not a two-house person. But beloved, we must look at the hearts. There is a focus right now in the movement to bring Torah. I hear this from, especially from a, a non-Jewish teacher. Bring the nations back to Torah. That's the hot thing right now to say. Bring the nation uh, back to Torah. I ask myself the question, what is it? What is it entailing? Teaching some people who don't know anything in Hebrew, a few Hebrew words? Teaching somebody at the horror dancing? Lighting Shabbat candles? What is it? 
What does it mean to bring a person to Torah? The, the scripture says, to bring a person to Torah, is as the scripture says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise your heart. You know what it is to bring a person to Torah? To bring a person to a place of circumcision of the heart. A place that he can depend on a new heart transplant because he realizes he's dead without the God of Israel. Shame on us as a Messianic Jewish movement that we have made so hard for those from the nation to come on in and partake of the blessings of God. Yeah, the hero parties in their behalf, but we have cast these heroes upon ourselves by not welcoming a person without checking his ID card. Are you Jewish or are you Gentile? Beloved, it's season. It's time for us to stop. I don't know, this is probably not the right congregation to give this message, but that's what God is giving me for today. I love what Paul Philip Levertov says. He said the following, describing what does it mean to bring a person to the Torah. He says, Yeshua, by his love, expect to awaken in men love for him and love for each other. The test of true love for him is love for the brethren. This is the only commandment to his Talmudin, that those whom the Father has given him should all be one, as thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee. It is the ultimate highest aim. He died in order to gather together in one the children of God that were scattered. You know, we're talking, uh, uh, it dawned on me, we're talking in dinner tonight about gathering the scattered. Well, we're talking about the tribe in Africa and the tribe in this and this. What about gathering the scattered among the body of Messiah? Who are becoming scattered right now. What about those who are hurt and wounded? Who need to come back home? On the other hand, this is the true messianic movement. This is what God called messianic Judaism to be. On the other hand, we have some in, inside the Hebraic root. Who want to teach the externalities of the law. Let me tell you what is not Torah observance, what is not Torah keeping. I heard this set statement before. Tell me if you ever heard it. Maybe it's even new today and maybe God wants to deal with your spirit. I keep Shabbat. People said to me, I'm a messianic. I said, yeah, oh yeah, what makes you a messianic? Tell me. They said, well, I keep Shabbat. I keep Shabbat at the synagogue. Yet when you come to service, you never worship God. I see this. I'm telling you, I travel all over the world. Or people come to me and say, mm, this is not kosher on the kitchen. Yeah, the food is not kosher, perhaps. But you know what else is not kosher? Is your lips and attitude. Or says, this is my favorite of some of, our, of people who said they're messianic. say, I observe the mitzvot. Yet I have no active prayer life. How can you observe the mitzvot without an active prayer life? Obviously I'm using some extreme example here. But here's the point I'm trying to tell you today. You have to make a decision today. Do you want to be part of the Hebraic movement? Or you want to be part of the Torah of love? Because the two are not the same. And I'm telling you, you have a place for all of you to come to the true, authentic Torah. But the true, authentic Torah will lead you to something completely different. It will not lead you to Judaism. It will give, lead you to the giver of the law. Yeshua. What I'm trying to tell you is any observance of the Torah that does not lead you to be more in love with the Creator and with the people around Him. And will not, any kind of observer that will, will not increase your walk with God, it's not only will not do you good. You ready? It will kill you. Amen. It will kill you. Amen. And the truth needs to be heard. 
I always laugh when people say, well, I'm messianic. And I ask the question, how can you call yourself messianic when you have no zeal and passion of the people of Messiah? And for Messiah himself, what does it mean for crying out loud? Let's be real. Question I want you to ask today in meditation is, do I want to be part of this break movement, two hours, whatever it is? I don't care about the label. Choose your label. Or do I want to be part of a transformation, transformational messianic movement? Spirit-led, Messiah-centered, the Torah of love. Do I want to learn about the Messiah? Or do I want to transform myself to become a prototype of the Messiah? You know, so many times we learn about the Messiah. You know what the difference between Hebrew root and Messianic Judaism? Hebrew root, sit down on the tuches all day and study end time prophecies. Those who are called out will make sure that end time prophecies will come to life. Because they are there and doing the work to make sure that they will happen. Do you want to read about the story or do you want to be part of the story today? This is the question. Yeah, it's not easy. In essence, what the Torah trying to tell us this Shabbat in Exodus 12, 48, 49, remember, re, continue in number 15, 16, continue in Romans 11, continue in Ephesians, Ephesians 2, is that if the Torah, if Torah observant, if you truly want to become a Torah observant, if it is properly exercised, it would lead you to love God and to love people in the highest possible capacity. The call of the Torah is simply that. To increase your love level to Hashem beyond something that you can never be. And your love level to people to a level that you can never be. And boy, I know about this very hard. I have been accused every day by my own brethren of being liar and slanderous. Every day people send me nasty email cursing me. Death threats. And I have to die. And it is not easy. I don't care what anybody tell you. To be a Torah observant through the Torah of Yeshua HaMashiach is higher than any other Torah out there. When proper Torah observance take place, our love for God will increase. The zeal for Him and the passion will increase. And now our, our desire to please Him will also increase. I know that. Levert of right, this is at the deepest longings of a genuine Hasid, a devout one, is to become a living Torah. The keeping of the Torah for him is only a means to an end. And you know what the end is? Not Torah. It's a direct marriage union with God. However, there is always a ever. It is possible to keep all the mitzvot and yet to be far, so far from God. To such men, the Torah can become, as Shaul says, a savior of death unto death. The Hasidic writers similarly use the Talmudic term sam mavet, a drug of death. The poison can be cured only by salt of the Spirit of God, as Elisha cured the poisonous water with salt. Those are shocking statements. Friends, it is not just about Hebrew root versus Messianic Judaism. It is about the fact that the Torah is a two-edged sword. And if you grab it in the wrong side, it is not just going to hurt. It's going to cut you. And we ourselves have to make a decision today.
Is this what we're doing in the movement? What we are doing individually? Bring us closer. Not to your neighbor I'm talking now. I'm talking to you. Being part of the messianic movement. Does it bring you closer to God? Does it increase your love level toward him? What about your wife? What about your children? What about the strangers? What about those who don't know the Lord? Do you love them more or less? That is the litmus test that we all have to live by and think about. They did a research and they asked Americans, what attracts you to your spouse? Okay, before she, was, she or he was your spouse. You know what 9 of 10 out of Americans says? Anybody knows? What a truck? The eyes, the lips, the body. What do you think? None of the above. Nine out of ten Americans said they were attracted to the person based upon their smell. Or based upon their smell. Incredible. Shaul knew that because he was a beauty expert when he said, but thanks be to God who always lead us as captive in Yeshua to have procession and thus spread the aroma of this knowledge of him everywhere. For we are God, to God the pleasing aroma of Mashiach among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of bring death. To the other, we are the aroma to bring life. And listen to his question. And who is equal to such a task? You have been brought into Torah, not that you hold it, so that you can smell really good and go to the world. And the people will smell, say, this is honey. I want to be next to the honey. <laughs> you smell good. Are you following the, what Shaul is telling us here? He said that people are going to look at you and they're going to make a decision about God. They don't need to hear God preach to them. They're going to associate you with God. You remember the story and the scripture of a man named, of a man named Jonathan? Who was Jonathan's best friend? David. David. Yes. And then, and then who was Jonathan's Jonathan father? Was he a good guy or bad guy? Now, was, was Jonathan a good friend to David? And the scripture tells us, and Jonathan took great liking to David. And you know, when you see it in the Hebrew, it's interesting. When you see the word, and Jonathan took great liking into David, you know Jonathan's name in the scripture change. You don't see it in the English. His name changed from Yonatan to Yehonatan. God took the hay and changed it. And then in the rest of the scripture, he is always known as Yehonatan. Because God took him and he branded him to smell as the Mashiach. David is a picture of the Mashiach. Are you following what I'm telling you? God is going to look for people to be branded like him. You know, Superman with S, he looked for the hay, the big hay for Adonai, Yud for Yeshua. And he's looking for you today. And he says, I am not terribly picky. I don't care if you're Jew, you're Gentile, black, white, orange, purple. Do you want to be branded? That is the question. And he said, if you want to be branded, it is not just about studying. It's about knowing it is about loving me. And it's loving all those people. Yeah, those stinky people. Loving them even more. Yes. He uses here the, the, the term. This interesting. He used the, 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 Shaul used the term reach mavet. He says, I'm going to smell it. You're going to not smell so good. You're going to stink. And fly finally, this will be dead. How much time, so many chances we have been to be a light, to be life, to be Messiah to somebody. And we turn away. Beloved, we have to repent for this and come back. Because that's what it's meant to be messianic. 
That's why you brought to Torah? Yes? Almost done. Short rebuke. <laughs> a matter of fact, in the same line, we read this in the Talmud. This is straight from the sages. It says this. Whoever occupies itself with Torah, okay, with, with the Torah, for its own sake, it is learning, become like an elixir of life to him. For it is says, Et chai she is a tree of life. The Torah is a life. How many of you believe the Torah is life? Yeah. However, however, there is over, over. Whoever occupies himself with the Torah, not for its own sake, it's become to him a deadly poison. As it is says, my, my doctrine shall drop in the rain and arifa. You know what arifa in Hebrew? Arifa is your chopping of the head. Arifa surely means that. Even our sages have told us that the Torah is a life. But if it's not exercised for its own sake, it will daily to the dead to those who exercise it and those who hear it. Okay? The question is where and we want to do. And the biggest question, what does it mean exercise the Torah for its own sake? What does it mean, exercise the Torah for its own sake? It means, it means that we are circumcising our hearts. I'm coming back to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. It means that our heart is yielded to the God of Israel. That is what it means. Paul Philip Levertop says this, The law of love is derived from the love of God. The more we love him, the better we love men. We must look at men with the eyes of God and love him as God loves him. What I'm asking you today, friends, is to be able to look at people the way God looks at people. And you know how God looks at people? Whoever told you that God looks at people as a bunch of sinners is a liar. God look at, about, at all of us as people who are beautiful. Psalm 8 says that we are created slight, slightly below him. He says, what is Ben Enosh? That you are so mindful of him. You know what Enosh means? Somebody who puts you on Enosh is dying. Somebody on a dying bed. Usually when you see a dead corpse, nobody take care of the corpse. You go to the next sick person. But God care about this dead co corpse. We and I call Ben Bnei Adam, son of dirt. That's what you are, Adama. He has taken dirt and he resurrected the dirt. So we can go around the world and exhibit the love toward him and toward one another. Pastor David, can you come and play something for a second? I want to uh, give opportunity to, to, to God to do something among us today. Yes. Yes, it's not easy. But do you want to be Torah observant? I'm going to give you today, I'm not going to make an invitation. I'm going to do a different type of invitation. Those who really want to observe the Torah today. Observe the Torah of Mashiach. Notice what the scripture says. Yeshua said, you are to be the light on the top of the mountain. A city on a hill will not be hidden, he says. He said it clearly. He is looking today for people who say, I am authentic. I am who I am in Yeshua. I don't need to be more Jewish. I don't need to be less Jewish. I am who I am. You made me the way you have made me, God. I have been made perfectly. I have been made wonderfully. I have made to exalt you, Master of the world. You have adopted me by your mercy. God had mercy upon of you from the nations here, that He have brought you from the nations to Messianic congregation. What a blessing to have this place here, where the nations can hear the word of the Lord. 
the gospel in its full context. What a blessing. But it's now it's the rest is up to you. God says, do you hold something against your brother? Let it go. Do you hold something against me? Let it go. I'm going to say specific things now. It's God speak to you through those things. I just want to ask you to stand up. Okay? You don't have to confess anything to me. It's between you and Hashem. By the way, I don't believe in manipulation. You stand only if God says stand. Okay? I don't care if one person stand here or everybody stand here. But God wants authenticity today. He is seeking those who want to come and truly join into Israel. Join to Israel not just by the externality, but join to Israel by the laws of Musar. Those who say, I want ready to go to a higher plane. My spiritual walk may be not where it should be, but I am ready to go a step higher. I am ready to take it a step higher. You know, it says on the Mashiach, on Zechariah 9.9, it says on the Messiah that he is riding upon a donkey. I never understood. Why donkey? What not a horse? And it's done on me. The word donkey in Hebrew means chamor. That is rooted in the word chomer. He's riding upon the flesh. He is supernatural. He is above everything physical the world can throw. He's above the clouds. He's above everything. He's supernatural. You might have never received the gift of Mashiach in your life. Maybe you want. You know, Torah means that you live supernatural life. You're not stuck in the physical. Maybe somebody here ready for a supernatural. Maybe somebody here need to receive the Ruach HaKodesh. Yeah, that's in the Torah. Yeah, that's in the Torah. See what happened when Bezalel built the tabernacle. Holy Spirit came upon him. The same Holy Spirit was there in Genesis and in Acts. It's not charismatic. It's the Torah of love. So don't let the pride hold you. If somebody here also today holds something against their husband or their wife, today you need to let it go. If somebody here holds something against a congregant, against somebody in the congregation, if you hold in any offense, any offense, today you need to let it go. Thank you. Here is the way we are going to do it. We're going to do it the Jewish way. Those who are standing. We're not going to come to God and say, release me, release me, release me. No. First we're going to praise the king. And then we're going to release it. That's the Jewish way to pray. First we thank him for who he is. And then we're going to do something very unique. That the heavens will rejoice. David, lead us in one song. Those who are standing, by the way, it's never too late to stand up if God needs to deal with you today, okay? But if you're standing right now, you know why you are standing. And I want you to, just to focus for a second on the Lord. Don't focus on why you're standing. Focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord because He's awesome. Let us all focus on the Lord. Yeshua Ata Adon. Veshem bincha, Abba, u gadol. Yeshua bola makom aze vete male oto. Beruah chasdecha, beava. Toda lecha, Abba. Shata aita, began Eden. Aita lifnei abriya, Abba. Aita ba midbar imam Israel. Aita imam Israel bimatan Torah, veata imam Israel achshav. תודה לך אבא על הגויים האלה שבאים להיכנס, להיכנס אבא פנימה לתוך ההבטחות של עם ישראל הם רוצים להיות חלק, חלק מאיתנו אבא חלק מההבטחות The promises that you have given us that says אבא that we will live, that we will thrive, we will be blessed 
that whoever hear and receive you will have eternal life. By the way, I really sense in my heart that there is somebody here that does not know the Lord today that is going to receive Yeshua for the first time. We're not going to make a big show of this, but if you, it's you today, come and speak to me after the service. I want to pray for you. Uh, I will drop everything to receive Mashiach because I sense there is somebody here who's today going to receive him for the first time. But let's take a few minutes just to praise the King in one song and then we will do something to release this, to release the reason you are standing today. So you can become a Torah observant, Messiah-centered believer. Hey 